Describing an image and writing out the description for all students, and then especially those with visual impairments using screen readers, um, we are worried about giving away the answer, and it's a very valid concern that many of us in STEM will have to deal with continually um, as we move forward with accessibility, and also in other departments as well. And so this is an example, this picture here of a cat standing on the bed where to describe the image, the picture shows a cat standing on a bed, is to give away the answer because the question for the problem is, where is the cat? So the options were by the bed, on the bed, over the bed, or under the bed. And so like this document says, if the image description gives away the answer to an item and there is no other way to describe the image appropriately, then the image has what they're saying is visual bias. And, and this is the case where as faculty, as departments, and as a college, we have to work together to try to keep um, bringing in questions that we can describe appropriately. So this adds a, a layer of not just about what we pick as a question, but when we create it for accessibility in the description, um, will we be, is it something we can actually describe without giving away the answer? So this is an example pre presented by NWEA, a nonprofit um, organization out of Portland, Oregon. So in this next example, we're dealing with the image that the description would cause what the doc this document states is cognitive um, overload. And so when we went, go to describe an image like this with these three parallel lines and um, two lines intersecting amongst those creating multiple angles and many labelings on all of them. The description would be long. I have not attempted to describe this, but if I did, it would be quite long. It would um, lead to what they're um, suggesting, which is cognitive overload. However, um, whether or not this document or any kind of um, organization would say, oh, throw it out because it's too much of a cognitive overload. I actually, as a math instructor, I think that's one of the things we actually are, are kind of trying to have the students have. I know when I give them a problem, um, something that's maybe visual like this, or even just a word problem, and we have that extraneous information, or there are a lot, there is a lot going on, part of what we're doing in that problem is assessing their ability to look at all that information, dissect it down, piece together what they need, and focus on what they're actually supposed to be looking for. That's part of what we're testing, not just uh, the uh, simple use of a formula or something. And so in this case, even though this image by this document is deemed as something that would have a cognitive overload with this, if you had to describe this image, um, I wouldn't want to take it out of an assessment necessarily because my visual students would also be dealing with the same cognitive overload idea. And so I think it becomes a discussion uh, of each department and all of us as colleagues, an ongoing discussion that has to be going on about being able to describe these images, making them accessible, where we don't have one of two things happening. One, where the students that are just basing um, on the visual on the image only without the long description, if they're looking at it and make sure they don't have more of an advantage versus those who are reading the long description with their screen readers, um, whom maybe we accidentally give the answer partially in the long description. It's a very fine balancing act and I have not found a great answer for it. This research is not very far along from what I can tell and I've been doing a lot of research. So this is one where I, I would attempt to a description and bring it forth to my math department and keep going from there, bring it to my accessibility support center. And I suggest with any science and math, that's what we're going to have to do. This is a complicated example. From here on out, I'll give some other examples of resources I found of how to describe things and the guidelines, but um, definitely not an, an easy answer here. So let's look at some of the resources I have found that I'm going to put in the description, the links in the descriptions below the video. So that way you can have these for yourself. This is the National Center for Accessible Media put out this, I think they made it about, yeah, 2008 was when this was made. And this is the most research I found on it um, so far. 
and they have a guidelines for describing STEM images. And these guidelines that are listed in this link that um, I have here, so once you click on that guidelines for Descri describing STEM images link, it leads you to talking about brevity, data, clarity, etc. This is what other uh, colleges that are kind of on the up and up of accessibility are using still to this day. So this I've seen at other colleges. Um, what's also nice is if you go to the content li link, um, they actually have bar chart, line graph, Venn diagram, and many other um, resources, math equations, for how to describe things. And part of another piece, it was actually kind of hard to find. So I found this math images link. I'm going to put it as a separate link because it was kind of hard to navigate to, but describing images for enhanced assessments. And so this brings into light when we are actually describing images for assessment purposes. And some of the things I want to point out of the examples they give is something like a number line. I honestly feel like the way I describe it is giving away the answer. I like how they just tell the position of the dot by bringing into light, um, if you read the description, each of the labeled numbers are separated by three equally spaced marks. So um, the dot is on the first mark after 3.9. It's not giving away the answer because you don't actually state the numerical position of the dot. And another one um, for geometry, knowing how to describe based on knowing what you have taught the student or what you expect the student to already know. So in this case, we have a hexagon, but we don't have to describe the hexagon because it's supposed to be prerequisite knowledge for the student. So that helps us know how to describe what's um, what is actually here and it, it just talks about describing the labels from moving clockwise starting at the top and so not necessarily giving away any of the answer and another one this line segment i like this example because it talks about how certain wording could give away the answer and then they give examples of the wording that wouldn't necessarily give away the answer and again they bring in um uh, the image, which is uh, the spinner. But, you know, you look at this and you want to describe it. Oh, there's four pink triangles and two blue. That's giving away the answer when you say, oh, there's four out of the eight. And um, they don't do that in the description. And uh, so I like, again, how they describe about moving clockwise. I really like these examples for how you can just kind of get an idea of how to describe things without giving actual answers away in the description. Within the same website, there's some other examples I would urge you to just jump around in this website. There's some standard diagrams. Um, there's some comparison diagrams, image within images. And then, of course, we have one of the standard pre-calculus algebra type um, problems with the flagpole, and they give a really good way of how to describe that. And this is, I would say, just a jumping off point because, again, it depends on what you're assessing in the problem and that changes how you describe it. Another resource I found was a, a PowerPoint from the same National Center for Accessible Media, and it goes into great um, uh, ways to describe and what to look for, but it is quite lengthy. The, one of the examples I want to show here is their preferred descriptive practice for this Venn diagram. It says the Venn diagram shows two intersecting circles one labeled Africa 93 and the other labeled Asia 155, the area of intersection is labeled 70. Now, if I were to present this graphic and ask how many uh, people were in the uh, interse intersection, then this description would be giving away the answer because the area of intersection is labeled 70, that would be giving away the answer. So in my description, I would have to describe the two circles um, where the there is an overlapping area or there's a an, um, oh, overlap or or even if you said shared area that still kind of feels like it's giving away the answer and I honestly couldn't find a better way to describe this and so that's again something that would I would um, urge as an open discussion it's it's going to be a learning curve for all of us I want to leave with something I saw on this PowerPoint that I think this kind of um, brings descriptions uh, into and to light of, of how big of a deal they are and how difficult and complex it is to actually write a description. Um, so this is a picture, two pictures of home plate, one's baseball home plate, and one is just an actual plate. And, and this actually goes for um, 
even students that are non-visually impaired where describing an image, if they're not familiar with that type of diagram, they're going to interpret it in, in their mind, even looking at it a different way. So these descriptions can be quite helpful for all students, depending on how we write them. So based on my research so far, I've come up with some questions that we ask, should be asking ourselves when we're writing the description for images that we're going to use in assessments. First of all, what are you assessing? Once you know what you're trying to test the student on, then you can ask yourself this second question. Are there any keywords, definitions that you're using in your description that give the answer away? And if so, what are they? So it's not a matter of trying to make the entire description so vague or, or out there. It's a matter of figure out what you're assessing and see if any of those um, key points are accidentally written in the description. And what do we do if you get stuck in writing the description like I did with the Venn diagram? At this point, the resources that I'm putting in the description box below will be helpful, but the best resource we're going to have is each other. And as we get more resources on campus um, at the Accessibility Support Center, and uh, as we learn more ourselves and just keep sharing the information. But the best we can do right now is know what we are trying to assess and then looking on our descriptions and seeing if that's what's actually being stated in there. So. That is where I'm going to leave you with this. As I find more, I'll make more videos.